Hi there, this is Matt once again, coming back at you with another review for a Patrick Swayze film that was sent to me by a very nice guy, and that is Letters from a Killer. Don't open the mail. Now, it may, this cover makes it look like Patrick Swayze is the killer, but he's not. He's not the killer. He's, a, he's an innocent. In fact, he's a guy who's on death row for killing his wife, but he really didn't. And during his time in death row, he wrote this book which became a bestseller and also during it he wrote to a couple women wrote to a couple didn't really write I should say I should writing this wrong word he had tapes where he would record and send old cassette tapes and they would get back and forth and then one of the asshole guards fucked with him switched the tapes and so one of the women got the wrong tape and they're pissed off that this he talked to different women, and now she wants revenge for that. Because about 15, 20 minutes in, his lawyer comes in, finds out, hey, something's got fucked up in the court, the trial, some evidence was suppressed. So Patrick Swayze gets released, he's free after a retrial. And pretty much after that, he goes to see the women. One of them is actually Kim Myers from Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2. I know you can't see it well, but that's Kim Myers. It was all cool. It was kind of cool to see her in another film because I like Elm Street 2. I like Kim Myers. For those wonders, directed by David Carson, who I think he directed, I believe that Wesley Snipes film, Unstoppable, which I wasn't too impressed with. And this is one of those films, it's a time waster at the end of the day. It's a time waster because I like Patrick Swayze. Like I said in my review of Green Dragon, I miss the guy. I do want to pick up more of his stuff. Like Next of Kin and Steel Dawn if it's out released. But this is a time waster. I thought Patrick Swayze did a good job performance wise. It's pretty much him meeting these women talked with them then two of the women get killed of course he's accused of murder he's got it all on the run really enough one of the women he had talked to is actually a former cop and then you have this actor which I should have looked this up because I do recognize the guy who was a prison guard that Patrick Swayze became friends with he helps him out for a little bit but then you get little bits of action, but there's nothing big or huge. You get a little bit where Patrick Swayze and some others are on horseback, which from I want to understand in the trivia, Patrick Swayze got hurt real bad. They flew off the horse and he broke his legs among other stuff, so it wasn't really a great time for him making this movie. Another little bit there's another little bit of action where him and this other girl on the bridge and cops are on both sides and they jump off into the water but if you're going into this an action or gunplay you're not getting anything if you're going into this for a slasher film aspect you're not getting anything out of it it's more of a thriller and sort of a I don't know if I want to say who done it but trying to figure out okay who can Patrick Swayze trust I mean, if the movie was to make us think that Patrick Swayze might be the killer, it failed on that, because you never think that Patrick Swayze is the killer, other than this cover, which looks like he's holding this knife and he's sinister. But never throughout the film do you think that he's the killer. It's either this woman who is with him now, who was a former cop, or it's Tim Myers. And lo and behold, becomes, you find out it's Tim Myers. <laughs> You do have some supporting actors I recognize. You have Bruce McGill, who I remember from Time Cop as Van Damme's boss. Uh, he's been in a few other films, Bruce McGill. And then you have Mark Rolston, who was in Aliens. Is Drake. Drake, we are leaving. i oh, sorry, I always remember that line from Hits and Aliens when I think of Drake. Drake, look out! Gets burned up. Even though he didn't have much dialogue, it's always my favorite role of his is Drake. But he's in there as a 
I think he's called FBI guy. Bruce McGill is sort of a guy leading the investigation. If you wonder why I keep pausing, because there's not much to say about the movie. It's if you wonder, this DVD does have a commentary track with director David Carson. A little behind the scenes montage. It says interviews with the cast director and producer, but I couldn't. I didn't find that on this DVD unless it's hidden somewhere I didn't know about. Trailer, another Millennium trailer galleries, just really sterling entertainment which released this. It's just one of those films that it is what it is. It, I don't, again, I don't know if I'd ever see this film again because it's sort of a all right, competent thriller. I mean, the direction didn't really do anything for me. David Carson, it's, I can't think of anything with the direction that's great. Camera work, pretty much the same as you find in a made for TV movie. I don't even know why this is rated R, to be honest. I mean, to be, to be perfectly, there's one scene where Kim Myers at the end cuts the one woman's finger off. But that's pretty much it. I mean, even the aftermath of when you find bodies, just the two women, they're pretty much on the ground, a little bit on their head, a little bit of blood on there. But nothing that I haven't seen on CSI, Miami, or one of those TV shows. I mean, to be honest, I've seen more crazy stuff on TV shows than anything in this film, so I don't know why it's rated R. Definitely don't remember any nudity in the film. I don't even remember much cuss words in the flick. It's just, for me, it's a run-of-the-mill thriller that does have an interesting idea. A guy who's on death row who's writing to women, he gets out, he's innocent, then this woman wants to get revenge on him. It's not a typical plot. And also Patrick Swayze, I like Patrick Swayze. Swayze. Patrick Swayze, I thought he did a good job in the film. But other than that, time waster at best, letters from a killer, I'm, I know it's not much of a review because usually my reviews are pretty much more in-depth than 20, 30 minutes long, but I'm not going to say it's a horrible movie, I'm not going to say it's a bad movie, it's just a, uh, it's their type of movie. But, hey, if you're a Patrick Swayze fan, you want to check out his movies, it's worth a look for him. And, it, cool, it's nice to see Tim Myers again. Bruce Medill, Mark Walston in, in the back as supporting characters, it was nice to see. But nothing in the direction will blow you away. There's, again, the only teeny bits of action is the stuff I mentioned. Oh, and then there's one bit where Patrick Swayze does get in a fight with these guys who, well, right when he gets out, there's this woman that he talks to, and then they fuck with him in a bar, and he leaves, and then they try to rape the girl, and Patrick Swayze beats a couple of these guys up. Which, you know, that was nice to see. It's not Roadhouse style, but, you know, it's nice, still nice to see. So that's the other little bit of action I didn't say. I think maybe there's a little bit of cuss words in that scene, actually, now that I think about it. Which makes sense. But it's, again, time waster. If you like Patrick Swayze, give it a watch. Letters from a Killer. It was an alright film. It was okay. pretty much it. Seems like a movie that would have been made for TV or made for cable is maybe the best way to put it. Seems like something that would be made for HBO or made for Showtime. It, it has that feel to it. I don't know why. But maybe that's just me. Anyway, that's Letters from a Killer. Up to you. Again, I'm not going to say it was awesome or great, but it didn't suck either. It was just sort of there. But still, I do thank the guy for sending these because I'm a fan of Patrick Swayze. I had not seen these films before. And even though at the end of the day, they didn't blow me away or anything. They were just time wasters. I miss Patrick Swayze. It was nice to see movies I had not seen before. And it helps for the collection for Patrick Swayze. Because I have goals. I have... Red Dawn, I have 
the one he did called Icon, which I didn't care for because it was way too long and way too sluggish. Uh, one day I would like to get Next of Kin and Steel Dawn, maybe a few others, but still nice to see these two. So thank you once again for sending these. Thanks for watching, take care, and we will see you later. Bye-bye.